I'm going to show you some basic image processing using ImageJ. And uh, the tutorial outline will be first that we start ImageJ or Fiji. Uh, then we open some images, inspecting them. And we will also look into uh, changing the brightness and contrast. After that, we are going to look at profiles and images. And um, for neutron imaging, very important to, to remove spots. As a little exercise, I'm going to show you some image arithmetics using Bea Lambert's law. And finally, saving the results as a file again. So let's start now. The first thing is to start ImageJ or Fiji, which I have installed. Uh, this is now on the Mac, but you can also install Fiji on Windows. Uh, for that, you will have a little bit different menus or not actually, the, the menus will be placed on different uh, places on the screen or windows than you will see here, but essentially the same menus will exist. So let's start it. And uh, here we got the main uh, window. And you can see you got some tools. Uh, these menus up here you will have on Windows will be attached to the window. So that's the main difference. So let's take a look at some images. And um, for this uh, tutorial series, I have prepared some projection data from a tomography data set. And just let's open it. And here you can see that we have a lot of images called wood. We have some images called DC and some called OB. So the wood images, they consist of projection data. The OB, they are um, the open beam, so beam without any sample. And DC is the dark current images, which represents the bias introduced in the electronics. So let's take a look at a wood image. I'm just taking the first one, dragging it into this gray field. And you can see the image as it is. Uh, then we can also take a look at an open beam, which corresponds to this one. And finally, we can also take a look at the dark current. And this is pretty black, actually. So all these images appear pretty good already, but let's take a look at setting the uh, contrast and brightness. So for that, we go into image and here you have adjust brightness and contrast. And now we can just press auto, for example, and you will see that the dark current, which was the last image actually I opened. Now you can see that there is some noise and there are also some spots in it. Uh, we can do the same uh, task on the wood image. So we can just click on the wood image and press auto and you will see that the contrast is much stronger and also the brightness in some regions is has changed. What you see up here is the histogram of the image which represents the gray level distribution in the image. Now it's a bit confusing that it's saying we have negative values but that's more a representation thing. Um, sometimes images are saved or image J understands that the images are saved as signed or unsigned integers and then you get the negative values. Actually not so much to pay attention to at this moment. So uh, we we'll let just go ahead. Uh, you can here also change the minimum, maximum value. You can see what happens in the image. You can actually use it to inspect different regions uh, with different gray level intervals. And um, with that, you can do some inspection on the images and see uh, tiny details that might be hidden if you do just the auto. For example, in this region, it's very hard to see anything. So um, with minimum and maximum, you can actually juggle a little bit and then you can see that actually there are intensity variations also within this very dark region, which is good because that is actually what we need for our tomography examples later. Another thing you can do is to look at the profile of the image. 
So now let's just see that we have a rectangle element chosen here. And then you can mark this rectangle. Go to Analyze. And here you have Plot Profile. And what you get is a profile of the intensity across this box that you have marked. Outside the object, you can see that there is very high intensity and down here is very low intensity. So that kind of makes sense that you have um, small values where it's dark and uh, large values where it's bright. You can also here click on live and when you do that, you can move around this box and see how the profile is changing across the whole sample. Can be useful if when you explore what the data looks like. So let's leave this for a little while. Uh, let's close that one too. And now we want to do some first arithmetics and Bia Lambert's law consists of, uh, in principle, the basic operation is that you divide the projection image by the open beam. But both images, they contain the bias of the dark current, so we have to subtract it from each of them. So let's first take the wood and work on that one. Now we go to Process and Image Calculator. And you can see here now that we have Image Calculator where we have Image 1, Image 2. Actually, both are same here. So we need to change now to DC here and we want to subtract the images. And now with integers, it can be tr uh, troublesome uh, if some points in the DC is greater than the same points in the wood image. So it's usually good to change here to 32 bit. Then we press OK. And you don't see very much difference here, but you have a new image called result of wood. And what you also can see is that we have some spots in the images, uh, like this little one here. Um, typically in the neutron images, you have much, much more spots. In this data set, it was actually very clean. But to remove spots, you can go into Process and Noise and Remove Outlayers. Don't use the speckle because that's just a plain medium filter. Remove outliers is a little bit smarter, so it actually adds a threshold to the whole filter process. And uh, here we can see a radius. The radius tells us the radius of the objects you want to remove and a threshold. The threshold is how much it deviates, the spot deviates from the background. And um, then you can select if you want to remove dark or bright outliers. And you can select here preview, then you can see the effect. And the little spot that we had over here is now removed. Other ones like this one didn't disappear. So then you can see that it's actually black. So now we need to press OK to confirm that we did the bright removal. Then we go back into process, noise, remove outliers. And this time we do dark spots. Again, we look at preview and you could see actually there was a slight change here, but not enough. So let's change this one now to maybe four. And then you can see that this spot actually is removed. So that is good. Let's confirm. And then we have cleaned this image. Now we do the same process again on the open beam. So Let's go back to process and do the image calculator. And um, now we change the wood to OB. And we want to subtract, we want to remove the DC. And finally, we want to do it 32 bit, same as before. And again, you don't see much of a difference. But on this one, again, we want to remove the spots which we may have on different places. And hmm, it didn't appear. So let's try it again. Uh, remove outliers. 
And um, let's do the dark one first because we have the settings already. So let's do the preview and we can see that that little dark spot we had over here actually on both images is gone. So now we can press OK. Then we do the same thing again for the bright ones. And before it was actually sufficient to use only two radius and we want the bright one and we want to remove it. Okay, so now we have two clean images where we have subtracted, uh, removed um, dark current and we have removed some spots. Now we want to do the division and uh, then go back into process, image calculator. And this time we want to select result of wood and we want to select result of OB. Now it's not any more subtraction, but we want to divide. And here we can press OK. And you can see that now we don't have much of this uneven illumination. It's pretty flat out here. And what you also can see if you move here, you can see that when we move around in this area, we have values. We can read the values over here if you are in the image. But as soon as I move out, you can see that the text changes. But now you can actually see on which coordinates and which value we have. Now there is a difference in intensity between the open beam and the dark, no, the open beam and the projection image. Uh, this difference results in values of 1.2. Ideally, we should have 1.0 here. That means we have the same open beam as we do a projection illumination. Now, to get rid of this deviation, we could, for example, multiply by a um, factor. And this factor comes from actually the dose that was used to produce each projection. We are not going to do this here, uh, but later when we do the reconstructions, this will be included in the process. Now, BL Lambert's law also contains an exponential. So now we want to compute the natural logarithm of this image. And uh, let's go back into process, math, and somewhere down here you have log, and the image turns black. The reason why it turns black is that the interval is wrong now. The display interval is wrong. The other thing is that the logarithm is mostly um, negative, oh, actually negative values when it's below one and it's positive values when it's above one. So that is the reason why it turns black here. We can go into image, adjust brightness and contrast do outer ones and then you can see the image as it was computed. Now the next step is that Pierre Lambert's law actually also contains a minus sign so we have to uh, multiply by minus one. So let's go back into process, math and multiply and here we want to multiply by minus one. Okay and the scaling is again wrong, so let's do an auto. And now we have computed uh, BL Lambert's law reversed, and um, what you see here is the optical thickness of the sample that we are looking at. The optical thickness is the line integral of attenuation coefficients in the path of the, um, the beam. And that is actually what's going to be used in um, reconstruction later. You don't have to do this if you want to reconstruct it because in MUREC that we are going to use, uh, this process is actually done for you. So you don't have to think about it. Now, as a last step, you can see that we ha now have a 32-bit image and saving it, you can actually save it as 32-bit if you like but mostly you want it in 16 bits because most programs don't like 32 bits. So the first step is we adjust the, the brightness and contrast, which we already did in this image. And um, that's actually pretty good already. 
And the next step is to go into image. And now you want to change the type. So you can see here now we have 32 bit. Now we want to save it as 16 bit, or maybe even 8 bit. So then we have to convert it into this data format before we save it um, as an image. So let's say I want 8 bit now. And now you can see that it changed to 8 bits. And the last thing we want to do is to save the image. And usually you want to go to save as. And here you can select different formats. TIFF is very common. Um, it's very good for many typical um, image processing tools uh, that we are using. TIFF has also the ability to save as 32-bit if you like. If you're going to use it for a presentation, which is probably the purpose in this case, because we changed it into 8 bits, then you can use also PNG. And PNG has the advantage that is easily included in web pages and um, different presentation tools. So that has the advantage here. Both TIFF and PNG are non-destructive compression. If you would change it to JPEG, you could probably make much smaller files, but JPEG has a disadvantage of being uh, destructive when you uh, save it. And for scientific purpose, it's not good to use JPEG mostly. So let's save it as PNG. Then we get um, a suggested file name. I would just probably say, save it as wood. Um, in this case, I'm going to save it on the desktop and then we can save. And uh, now we can take a look at the desktop and we see, okay, here is the file. And um, just open it. And you can see here is the resulting image that we had processed. So this was a quick tour of some image processing uh, tricks that you can use using ImageJ. ImageJ is very good for first inspection, some basic processing, but um, if you want to do mass production, it's maybe not the ideal tool, but it's a very useful tool working at the beamline, also for doing first inspections, creating few images. And um, with that, the tutorial is at the end and I hope you enjoyed it.